everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of CNB Bazaar Buzz here on the NDTV network. I am Cyrus Dabar and this is what we have for you on the show today. The Volvo XC40 takes on its rivals. The big announcement from the VW Group in India. And motorsport season finally kicks off with the Ameo Cup. So let's start straight with the lead story we have for you on the show today, the luxury entry-level SUV comparison. Now the Volvo XC40 is the new kid on the block and it takes on its rivals from Mercedes-Benz, BMW and Audi. Now, I've been driving all of those cars around and here's what I think is the new benchmark of the segment. The compact SUV has turned around the fortunes of a fair few automakers in India. The X1 did it for BMW, Audi tasted massive success with the Q3 and Mercedes-Benz saw a spike in sales with the GLA. And now Volvo has launched its brand new entry-level compact luxury SUV in India, the XC40. So it's only very obvious that we'd be extremely eager to compare the XC40 against all its contemporaries, which is why one nice bright early morning we have the Audi Q3, the Mercedes-Benz GLA and the X1 all year to go up against the new boy. The prices for the BMW X1 ranged from 34,50,000 to 44,50,000 rupees. The Q3 is next in line, priced at 34,70,000 rupees for the petrol and 36,50,000 to 42,88,000 rupees for the diesel. The Mercedes-Benz GLA on the other hand is the most affordable of the lot with prices starting at 33,70,000 rupees for the petrol and the diesel range starting from 31,70,000 to 38 lakh rupees. Comparatively though, the Volvo XC40 available in just one fully loaded variant is priced at 39,90,000 rupees and that is great value for money. So let's move on from price to something that is very important for the luxury car buyer and in fact any car buyer in India, interior space. Now, rear seat comfort is something that's very, very important in India, especially in a segment like this, because most owners will be driven by a chauffeur. And all of these cars have uh, common features like a panoramic sunroof, which makes the rear seat cabin and just the cabin in general really airy. But then you have the likes of the GLA, which has a very, very small, very slim window line, which makes it a little claustrophobic on the side here. And the GLA definitely is the smallest of the lot too, when it comes to sheer space, both in terms of leg space and in terms of width in the back seat. Come on! While the XC40 is the newest of the lot here, it isn't actually the most spacious. That honour goes to BMW X1. And not only is it the most spacious at the rear in terms of legroom, headroom and shoulder space, it is also the airiest as it is the only SUV here that has a third row of windows on the C-pillar too. Sticking with the interior theme, let's now see which one of these four SUVs gives you the best bang for your buck. And then we move to the benchmark of the segment, which is, without a shadow of doubt, the Volvo XC40. Now, just like the 90 and the 60, it gets this virtually mounted screen, which does everything that you need to do, but it still has its annoyances, but you do get used to it. But it offers so much more than all the other cars. For example, you get a virtual uh, digital instrument cluster, which none of the other cars have. And you also get features like wireless charging, which is, again, something only the Volvo gets. So. In this segment, when it comes to interior features and design, the Volvo wins it just hands down. Volvo has made it categorically clear that it's only going to be making four-cylinder engines going forward. And this four-cylinder engine is the two-liter diesel with 190 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. Now, the Volvo XC40 isn't making any claims of being the sportiest SUV of its segment. In fact, it just wants to get you from point A to point B in uh, utmost luxury and with the best levels of safety that it can provide to you and your family. And it does that very well. But it still gives you all that power and performance to play along with. Volvo will only be offering the XC40 in India with a diesel engine, unlike Audi and Mercedes-Benz that have a petrol 
and a diesel engine option for the Q3 and the GLA respectively. The petrol Q3 gets a 1.4 litre TSI engine that makes 148 bhp of peak power and 250 Nm of peak torque while the GLA gets a 2 litre turbo engine making 181 bhp of power and 300 Nm of torque. Moving to the diesels though, the BMW X1, the Audi Q3 and the Volvo XC40 all get a 2 litre turbocharged diesel engine while Mercedes Benz gets a slightly larger 2.1 litre motor. Strangely however, the Mercedes Benz is the least powerful with 168 bhp and 350 Nm while the Audi is the second runner up here at 184 bhp and 380 Nm. The BMW is the most powerful of the lot at 188 horsepower and 400 Nm while the Volvo comes in very very close second with 187 horsepower and an equal 400 Nm of torque. But as we mentioned earlier, the Volvo doesn't really give any pretensions of being a thoroughbred driver's car. Now the BMW though, now this definitely does have a sporting pretension. If you drive any other car here, you drive the Mercedes, you drive the Volvo, the Audi, they feel pretty much similar to drive. They're all easy light on, on their feet, they feel easy to drive in general. Get into the BMW and drive that back to back and then you really know what we drone about as automotive journalists. Steering feedback is so crucial, so critical sometimes and this car just has it in spades. It is a nicer car to drive on the whole, it's a definite sportier car to drive. So if you are looking for a sportier SUV in this, uh, in this category, in this segment, just go buy the BMW X1 and be done with it. You don't even have to further look into this review. And so it's finally time to come to a verdict on our entry-level luxury SUV shootout. Well, I've got all those, all the four keys to all the four cars with me. I have to take one home tonight. So which will it be? Well, I'm going to get rid of each key and that's the corresponding car. So let's start with the Q3. It's just too old. It doesn't have enough tech going for it anymore. It's just too relevant, even though it is pretty nice sort of value for money product. So that's the first one out. Now these three. It's the obvious, it's the GLA. It's just not an SUV per se when you compare it to the, to the sort of competition. And uh, it's a little too soft. And again, there's a new one coming. It just isn't there today. So that's the one that's gone next. So the big one, the Volvo or the BMW. I like the way the BMW drives. I've always been somebody who appreciates a sportier driving car. It looks nice too, especially in that M Sport package. But the Volvo looks nice too especially in an R design package with the gloss black accents. Mm, it's so difficult. But you know what? I think I've made a decision. The Volvo does have the nicer cabin. It's the nicer package. It's got that big screen that really does make a big difference. I do like the way the BMW drives, but that's the one that goes. I am taking the Volvo home tonight and it is the winner of our entry level luxury SUV shootout too. Welcome back to CNB Bazaar Buzz. Now, last week, the automotive world in India was dominated by one big announcement. It's the VW Group that has finally woken up and has a little more attention that they're going to be paying to Indian markets now. And Skoda will be leading the charge there. Here's our report on what's new, what to expect, and a lot more. The Volkswagen Group is one of the largest automakers in the world but in India has seen poor sales due to the lack of relevant products in the mass market space, be it from Czech brand Skoda or VW itself. All that is set to change though, with the Volkswagen Group announcing a massive 1 billion euro investment for the Indian market. The investment will be exhausted by 2020 and will mainly be used to localize the VW Group's much touted modular MQB platform for Indian use. 
what we are getting is the MQB A0 platform which underpins the likes of the current generation Skoda Octavia. It will help move a lot of cars from being assembled to being fully manufactured in India. The Indian car market is expected to grow over 5 million units by 2020 and the VW Group intends to have about 5% market share of that market by 2025. This means it will have to be competitive on pricing which demands very high levels of localization. We will localize roughly 90% of all components and parts for our new products here in India. And this is why we are setting up a new project house for research and development, which is, by the way, currently under construction already in Pune, and we are going to hire people for that already now. Uh, and so we will develop this car with Indian engineers, with Indian workers it will be built, with Indian suppliers, which will make the passing components for our Indian customers. And I think this is the best approach here in this very competitive and price sensitive market. The reins of new car development for the Indian market have been handed over to Skoda and the first product launch will be a compact SUV. Most likely a production version of the Skoda Vision X concept, the new SUV will have its global debut in India in 2020 and production is due to begin in early 2021. We are starting now firstly with a mid-size SUV, very competitive. But uh, we did not rule out uh, a hatchback, we do not rule out anything what is really competitive. Uh, but um, we have uh, to now start with a very strong offer and this will be a mid-size SUV. The SUV from Skoda will be accompanied by a mid-size SUV from Volkswagen, likely the T-Cross compact SUV. The T-Cross concept has been shown as a convertible, but the production car will be a roofed five-seater. While the exterior design on both these cars will be considerably different, both of them will share parts and be based on the same architecture. Both these SUVs will then be followed by two more SUVs, one each from Skoda and Volkswagen, details of which aren't clear just yet. But they are likely to be a tad longer, yet positioned below the Tiguan and the Kodiak. But they will use the same platform, which of course could spawn more products from Skoda, VW and Audi too, including a likely Vento sedan replacement. The MQB platform is already ready to take on electric power trains from the likes of a mild hybrid to an actual series hybrid and even an all-electric powertrain. But VW will only go electric in India if policy and customer environments make it conducive. You will see uh, this market turning from, electrify, from, from uh, internal combustion engine into more and more electrified vehicles, but also CNG from an Indian perspective is a very attractive alternative. And uh, so um, that there will be big changes and uh, the prerequisites of course have to be taken by the government and by the authorities itself. If you don't have the infrastructure for the new technology, uh, it does not make sense from a customer point of view. With the Dieselgate scandal tainting VW's long history, it is no surprise that the German auto giant wants to concentrate more on cleaner technology. The first engine on offer will be the new 1-litre TSI petrol motor in its highest spec, making around 115 bhp of peak power. Expect high mileage claims too. So encouraging and exciting news, it's too bad we'll have to wait till 2020 for all the fun to begin.